so in the next lecture we are now going to define what is meant by unique factorization domain now what is the definition of unique factorization domain first of all we we are working in uh, what we are working in an integral domain so i will assume that d is what d is an integral domain and uh, there are two conditions which are there in the definition of an unique factorization domain first is that if i take a non zero non unit element in d then that element can be factorized into irreducibles which are finite in number finite in number okay so here it means that you must be able to first factorize the element into how many irreducibles into finite number of irreducibles and second thing is so so this is this part is about factorization now the second part will come about uniqueness so what what uh, in what sense i want unique suppose i have p1 p2 pr as one factorization and q1 q2 qr is another factorization of that element then what should happen then this number of factors you will first of all get same it cannot happen you get six factors here and you got seven factors there okay this should not happen the number of factors should be the same and what should be the relation between these pi's and qi's the relation between these pi's and qi's is that they must be associates of each other and pi qi's are associates of each other so if this thing happens then i will say that the given integral domain is an unique factorization domain so it has factored every non zero non unit element has a factorization first and second if i get two factorizations the two factorizations first of all must contain same number of factors not only that the elements p1 p2 pr and q1 q2 qs may may not be in a same order they may have different order but pi's are what i can reorder them and make them same but the pi's are what pi's are associates of qi's what is an example of that so an example of that is let me take uh, z so i am working in z suppose and i will choose an element say 10 which is a non zero non unit element because we know that units in z are what plus minus 1 so a is non zero non unit element and what are the um, first of all i can factorize 10 into uh, 10 as 5 into 2 so the number of factors are finite i got only two factors and suppose if i write the other factorization of 10 as minus 5 into minus 2 uh then i will understand that 5 and minus 5 are associates of each other 2 and minus 2 is also are also associates of each other okay suppose if i write here in this case suppose i write here this as minus 2 into minus 5 what i will do i will first write them in a proper order i will write them as minus 5 into minus 2 i am working in a commutative ring so problem will not come okay so so what will happen then i can reorder them or even without reordering i will say that this is my p1 q1 and this is my p2 q2 i will say that p1 is associate of q2 and p2 is associate of q1 but you see that both of them are having the same number of factors means the number of factors here is r and the number of factors here is s so both are same both factors uh, the number of factors is 2 so this means that by definition in z you can always do this if you take any number you will be able to factorize it in a unique way up to associates okay so then both the definition uh, both the parts of the definition are satisfied and therefore this means tells us that z is actually what the first example which will stand as a ufd so i will here now declare that z is ufd i can do this thing for z okay now uh, let us define a very important definition 
uh, needed to study the space uh, UFDs. So let me write down the definition of a prime element. I'm not talking prime number. Remember, I'm talking about prime element. OK, what is the definition of a prime element? So I will take D to be an integral domain. So let D be an integral domain. And I will take an element P in D is set to be prime if P divides AB implies that P divides A or P divides B. So this looks like your Euclid's lemma for integers, which we have proved in your first year classes. OK, uh, that if you take a prime, if you take a prime number, and if that prime number divides a b then pr that prime number divides a or prime number divides b so this this will be the definition of prime element and this prime element p i'm going to take a non zero non unit again okay non zero non unit so this definition of prime element is very useful in proving the next upcoming theorem which is one of the most important theorems in ring theory that theorem is that every pid is always a ufd so if you take any pid that pid will always be a unique uh, factorization domain means for i know all the examples of pids okay all these pids have now by virtue of this theorem have gone inside the set inside the thing called as ufds so all integers fields then polynomial rings all these things have automatically become what ufds means what is what is the meaning of this you pick up any one suppose i pick z which is a PID, I will go inside Z, I will take non-zero non-units and I will factorize them and that factorization is unique up to associates. If you take any polynomial in Rx or Fx, if you take a non-zero non-unit polynomial in Fx and if you try to factorize it, it will get factorized into how many irreducibles into finite number of irreducibles and that factorization will be unique up to what unique up to associates so this this important theorem will make all my pids into ufds the one of the most important pid is what integers is always a important pid now once i am done with this the most important thing special property that is of that is observed in in a ufd is that you will always be able to calculate gcd in a ufd okay so i will write here that important gcd always exist in ufd okay now because of that what i will do is i will um, I, I i hope all of you know what is meant by greatest common divisor so if g if d is the gcd of a and b okay what is the meaning of this the meaning of this there is that d will divide a and this d will also divide b because it is the divisor of a and b and what is the other definition if some other person divides a and b if some common divisor divides a and b then what is the relation between that common divisor and between the greatest common divisor obviously d must be greater than uh, c because it, d is the greatest and not only that this c must also divide d this is the meaning of the greatest common divisor so what am i trying to tell you if you're working in a unique factorization domain and if you pick any two elements you will always be able to calculate the greatest common divisor of those two elements okay so let us define what is a primitive polynomial now what i will do is i will take a polynomial I, in in dx so let d be a ufd first of all 
unique factorization domain and let us take a polynomial in the in the you have in the ring dx which is a polynomial ring with coefficients in this d okay now what i will do is i will look at these coefficients so what is px equal to so suppose i write px is a polynomial a naught plus a1x plus so on till a n x power n okay and what i will look what are these a naught a1 a n these are all coefficients are in which set the coefficients are in set d and what is d d is a uft now just as i told you before that you can always find gcd if you are working in a uft so what i will do is i will calculate the greatest common divisor of all these coefficients a naught a1 up to even i can find the uh, the, G, the gcd because we are working in a ufd and in ufd you can always find the greatest common divisor then i will find the greatest common divisor and if that greatest common divisor turns out to be one okay if the greatest common divisor of, of all coefficients turn out to be one then i will say that this polynomial is said to be what this polynomial is primitive so it is very simple so if i take one simple example to illustrate this so let me take a polynomial px is equal to 4x square plus 3x plus 2 now this is a polynomial now this is a polynomial in which uh, ring am i talking this and this all these coefficients of are integers and this is a polynomial ring zx now this 4 3 and 2 are all integers so and we know that the set of integers is unique factorization domain therefore i can find the gcd of 4 3 and 2 what is the gcd of 4 so what is the common num common divisor of 4 3 and 2 it is 1 so the gcd is 1 therefore this polynomial px which is 4x square plus 3x plus 2 is what is a primitive polynomial in zx very simple definition okay so on the contrary if you take a polynomial which is uh, suppose you take px to be 4x square plus 6x plus 2 okay then uh, what will happen the gcd of this is again in zx okay so the gcd of this coefficients of this polynomial 4 6 and 2 the common divisor is 2 so this is not equal to 1 so this means that this polynomial is not a primitive polynomial okay now if you observe here in this above polyn it's not primitive right so if you observe something here that if you if you can pull out that two factor common from all those coefficients so i will write px is equal to what 2 multiplied by what because 2 is common divisor right so it will be 2x square plus 3x plus what 3x plus 1 correct now this is a so i can write this because 2 is a common divisor so this is 2 times some other polynomial i am calling that polynomial gx right so now look at this 2 this 2 is a is an integer this gx is a polynomial in zx so what do i observe here now if i carefully look at this gx after taking out the common factor now there is this this is not only common factor but it is the greatest common factor so i have pulled out the maximum possible constant outside the polynomial so now whatever coefficients are left inside they will not have any other common factor because uh, because if if they had some common factor then that would have been a part of gcd and i would have pulled it outside right so this means the coefficients that are remaining inside or the polynomial which is having those coefficients now those coefficients do not have any common divisor because the greatest common divisor has been pulled out so this means that this inside polynomial the remaining polynomial gx that i'm having that polynomial will automatically become what that polynomial will automatically become a primitive polynomial right because i've pulled out a greatest common divisor out of 
that thing so therefore this means that if i have a polynomial px and if i can find out a constant c which is a element of the ufd says that that polynomial is c into some gx where what is gx where gx is which type of polynomial gx is a primitive polynomial okay then this c is called as what then this c is called as the content of polynomial so that c will be termed as content of that polynomial which polynomial of the polynomial p so who is the content of the polynomial p the content of the polynomial p is c and therefore in the example that we have noted so what was that example that example was px is equal to 4x square plus 6x plus 2 so this means i can pull out 2 into 2x square plus 3x plus 1 and this means that this is working like a c and this is working like a gx where this gx is a primitive polynomial and this c content is what uh, the c is the content of that polynomial okay now it may happen that instead of pulling out p uh, instead instead of pulling out uh, 2 i can pull even minus 2 common if i put minus 2 uh, com pull minus 2 common this will become minus 2x square this will become minus 3x and this will become minus 1 still it is correct still there is no problem this still this g is a primitive polynomial and this c becomes the content where c is what c is minus 2 so this means that content is not unique so if i give you a polynomial it need not be a unique number it it uh, so whatever content i will get of that polynomial earlier the content was 2 now the content is minus 2 so what can i say the content the content is not unique but it is it is unique up to what it is unique up to associates so this this i can say and now i can say that yes it is unique but unique up to what but unique up to associates so it can be either plus a or it is at the most minus a or if the unit is u then it is a u or it is my a a times u where u becomes the unit of the ring because the units in the ring are what only plus one and minus one so you have only plus two and minus two as only two associates of each other okay but if you are working in some more general ring where you have some units then it is a times u okay c times u i mean to say c times u right so now uh, if you if you look one at one simple example suppose i take two polynomials suppose i'm taking a polynomial as uh, 3x square plus uh, x plus 1 okay and i'm taking a polynomial qx is equal to suppose 2x plus 3 now let me just multiply p and q if i multiply p and q i'll get 3x square plus x plus 1 into 2x plus 3 will become uh, 6x cube plus 9x square plus 2x square plus 3x plus 2x plus 3 and i hope i'm going right it is 11x plus 5x plus 3 okay something like this okay so when i multiply these two polynomials i got this now observe that what am i trying to see here that look at this particular polynomial what do you see, see the speciality in this polynomial this polynomial is is what this polynomial is primitive polynomial because the gcd of the coefficients is what what is the gcd of 3 1 and 1 the gcd of 3 1 and 1 is 1 right no common divisor what about the polynomial q the polynomial q is also a primitive polynomial because gcd of 2 and 3 is also one i'm working in zx okay no need to tell you now that i'm working in zx okay and what do you observe in p into q the coefficients are 6 11 5 and 3 what is the common divisor of 6 11 5 and 3 again the, the it is 1 so the gcd is 1 so this means that this polynomial pq is also a is also a primitive polynomial so what are we trying to observe from this that if i'm working in a ufd so if d is a ufd and if i take two primitive polynomials okay so i've took 
P and Q. So I'm taking two primitive polynomials. Okay, then and if I multiply them, so if I take the product of those two primitive polynomials, then we again get what it is also primitive. So product of primitive polynomials is again a primitive polynomial. Okay, we observed by looking at that example in general if you if you are working in any ufd and if you pick up any two primitive polynomials and if you multiply them then you will again get a primitive polynomial this important observation was called as gauss lemma so once uh, gauss lemma is in our in our hands now we will be able to prove the most important theorem of the section unique factorization domains so what i will do is i will take d to be a ufd and i will consider a polynomial ring dx okay now what is meant by d is a ufd means it is an integral domain in which factorization is possible and what the factorization is unique up to associates this is what i know about d what about dx if d is a ufd can dx be a ufd can i factorize every element in dx up to associates unique up to associates so the answer to this question is yes and this is the most important theorem of related to ufd what is the theorem if d is ufd then the polynomial ring dx is also unique factorization domain okay now because of this theorem now let us observe something about our polynomial rings why this theorem is of so much importance okay now if you take a field if you are talking about a field suppose i'm talking about rx okay a field is r okay and therefore what is the polynomial ring associated to that the polynomial ring associated to that is rx okay so f was a field originally so does f is fx a field so that question we are asking ourselves okay if f is a field then is fx a field if r is field then is rx a field so the answer to this question is no rx is not a field right why rx is not a field rx is not a field because if i take any polynomial suppose i take a polynomial 2x plus 1 okay can i find another polynomial so that the product of these two polynomials will become one so you will see that if you multiply by any polynomial you will get no such polynomial you will be able to find such that their product will be equal to one so this means that uh, 2x plus 1 has no multiplicative inverse and therefore if f is a field okay that need not imply that fx is what fx is a field right so fields do not uh, satisfy this property that f is a field and fx is a field okay the next thing that we learned was something called as principal ideal domains what were pids if i take a pid okay if i take a pid d is a pid then is a dx a pid is a it's it's polynomial ring a pid so what is the answer to this question the answer to this question is again no so so which uh, pid will i choose we know that z is a pid right integers is a pid and consider the polynomial ring which polynomial ring zx now is zx a pid that is the question in front of us so the answer to this question is no because uh, we know that if you take ideal generated by 2 comma x in the lecture of pids i have done this that the ideal generated by 2 comma x is generated by two elements and therefore it, this ideal is not a principal ideal so this means that in z every ideal was principal but in zx there is some ideal which is not a principal ideal therefore this means that zx is not a 
PID. So fields do not satisfy that property. F is a field implies FX is a field that property fails. D is a PID implies DX is a PID that property also fails. But regarding to UFD, we have the answer is what the answer is. Yes, if D is a UFD, then DX is also a UFD. This is the reason this theorem has gained a lot of importance in ring theory to summarize now what we have done up to now re related to all these things is that first we know that every field i have stated these results i i will write it down again every field is always a pid and every pid is always a ufd these two important theorems we have stated in our previous classes right and we know that every ufd what is every ufd every ufd is always an integral domain why every ufd is an integral domain because it is a definition that a ufd is first point it is it should be integral domain then it should have factorization then it should have unique up to associates factorization right so this means that i can now draw a small picture for us that Firstly, I will draw all fields and all these fields are sitting inside the set of what they're sitting in the inside the set of PIDs and all the PIDs are sitting inside the set of UFDs and all these UFDs are further sitting inside the set of what set of the integral domain. So this diagram will help you remembering all the implications in one shot that every field is a PID, every PID is a UFD, every UFD is an integral domain. Now we have to fill proper rings inside this so that you'll understand why they are proper subsets. So let me write down what are the fields. The fields are real numbers, complex numbers, rational numbers, zps these are the fields at least we know okay who is missing you cannot write integers inside this set because integers is not a field but i know that integers is what integers is a pid right so if somebody asks you is the converse true of the first part is the converse true is every pid a field the answer to that question is no because integers is a PID but integers is not a field okay now let us go to the next one right L let me write here q root 2 also let me fill up this space okay mm, right let me go here what about uh, PID is contained in UFD so do I know any unique factorization domain is there any unique factorization domain which is not a principal ideal domain do we know any unique factorization domain which is not a principal ideal domain so look at that important theorem what is that important theorem telling us the important theorem that this theorem tells us that z is a uft and therefore, by the virtue of this theorem, I can say that ZX is also a UFD. So I got one example of set, which is a UFD, correct? ZX is a UFD. And therefore, in this picture, now I can write ZX. Now, see carefully, ZX is the converse of this theorem true is the converse of this the second theorem true the converse of this theorem is also false because the I got an UFD I know that ZX is UFD why I know that X is a UFD because of that theorem but ZX is not a PID ZX is not a PID why ZX is not a PID I just now told you ZX is not a PID because the ideal 2 comma X is not for it's not a principal ideal therefore zx cannot be a pid okay and here now we have what every ufd is a integral domain every every unique factorization domain is a integral domain and now we want to find one person here okay 
which will be what which will be an integral domain but it will not be a unique factorization domain so that person we will be covering in our upcoming lectures